Traders every day are earning thousands of dollars for themselves trading the market. What separates them from you is that these traders possess certain knowledge and tools the everyday person does not have. Tools that if you knew how to use, you too can make money every day with. Learn the right skills, tips and strategies from the very best at www.tradegenius. Rob Tebbett for Behind the Gloves in association with Pro Boxing Supplies. I'm here with the British light heavyweight champion Frank Mulioni at the O2 ahead of his you're topping the card this Saturday, yeah, Frank. Yeah. How's that feel? Ah, it's, a, it's a real honour and um, I'm very proud to be headlining such a good uh, good on the card. Um, top prospects coming through and uh, what a prestigious venue at the O2. So. Absolutely. I mean, the last time we saw you in the ring was in an absolute but it's a, a ma mammoth fight. That was a real, like thinking yeah. about it in my head, like playing over my head. It was a brilliant fight against Jose Burns, to obviously yeah. win the title. Yeah. Um, you don't look like you're you're carrying too many wounds, or certainly not that I can see. No, I, mean, I, I heal well. I think I've had over 70 stitches in my face uh, during my pro career. So. And you're still better. You're still not better looking bad. than I am. So that's oh, lovely. Cheers. <laughs> But um, yeah, how does it feel to be out of the ring for that long? Because I mean, you, you traditionally have been very active throughout your career. Um, has that been different preparing for this fight, or is it just? I think it's, uh, it's served me well. Um, obviously, the, the Jose Burton fight is a lot shorter in time um, than what I had going into that fight. Mm. So it's been six months since Jose Burton, whereas prior to Jose Burton, I had. 90 seconds in March, and then I hadn't had anything. Um, I think until September the year before. Mm. So, yeah, I've kind of, I've obviously haven't been as active, but I've had a, plenty of time to kind of learn, um, relearn my craft. Yeah, of course, because um, you're now Charles. with Don Charles. Exactly. Yeah. So we've had, we have more time to gel, um, and the experience. That's where that comes in of not overtraining. So I wasn't getting ready for the fight every single week. I was okay. Let's take a step back. We'll do some different training, and then. Uh, when the, when the fight draws nearer, then we'll start peaking, and it's worked out perfectly. I mean, you just mentioned, obviously, you're now with Don Charles, who's a renowned trainer, particularly in this country. Yep. Um, you've also recently, or in recent times, shall we say, gone up to light heavyweight. Now, yep. um, one of the things that was as was sort of a, not an issue, but one of the things that was mentioned before you fought Jose Burton was the fact that you were a super middleweight and you're a guy who likes to come forward. You, you yeah. throw power shots, you've got yeah. lovely right hand, um, and the consensus on Jose Burton's side of things was that you weren't going to be big enough, you weren't going to punch hard enough up at 175 pounds. Yeah. Now, obviously, you stopped Jose Burton and you hurt him several times. Do you feel like now you've been given a little bit more time to grow into the way you're going to be punching harder? Yeah, w without a doubt, um, I'm, I'm punching hard and it's, it's coming down to the technique. But also, I can train as hard as I want to train. Um, when I was making super middleweight, it wasn't really about learning, um, perfecting my skills. It's just about making weight Getting all the, the time. Off. Yeah. Um, you, I mean, you're a big super middleweight. Yeah, yeah, but that's bigger isn't always better. No, sure. Um, you only got to look at say Andre Ward just moved up from super middle to light heavyweight, and he's, he's absolutely flying. Um, Floyd Mayweather has moved up through the weights, Manny Pacquiao moved up through the weights. That's what you do with experience and you, you, as you get the experience in your, um, in your fights, you kind of know your body in training as well. So moving up is, uh, has been the best decision I've made and uh, I'm looking forward to, to showing that. Now your opponent is Ricky Summers, um, unbeaten. I think he's 13 and Yeah, 13 and 13 and 0. 13 yeah. and 0. What can you tell our viewers who may not be as familiar with Ricky Summers as I'm sure you are by this point? Yeah, he's, uh, he's obviously he's unbeaten, so he hasn't put a foot wrong in the, in the paid ranks. Hasn't really come out of his area, um, but he, he probably hasn't lost a round. Um, he's sparred some top guys, Nathan Cleverly, um, Carl Frotch, he's done a lot of work with. So he's he's got that experience through his sparring. Um, what I don't think he'll have is the, the big fight experience. This will be his first time, um, whether he lives up to it or not. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. I, I think technically I'm a better fighter. I've got more more experience in those big fights and um, I'll be looking to, to pick him apart and um, show why I'm a level above. Um, and obviously assuming everything goes right on Saturday night, uh, well, assuming everything goes right on Saturday night, what's the plans for you? I mean, you mentioned Nathan Cleverley obviously holds a strap at 175 pounds at the yep. world level. Um, are you looking to win the British title outright or is it, or is it you yeah, looking to, to move forward? Yeah, I'd love to, to win the British outright. Um, if I can do that and then get onto the world world stage or the European and then world stage, all well and good. But if a big fight comes along and the, the British title is kind of holding me back a little bit, then I'd have to look at that. Sure. But um, first things first, Saturday, Saturday night, night, I want to 
do a really good job. I put in the work. Um, I've stayed focused and. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to doing it. Okay, well just finally Frank, before you go, because I know you've been in demand, being the uh, headline attraction. Um, there is uh, a couple of young fighters on the bill in your division, in yep. light heavyweight. Uh, there's Jake Ball, who's obviously yep. been around now for, for a couple of years, and then there's obviously the debut of Josh Boazzi. I mean, yep. what do you know about either guy? And um, do you think you could give them any sort of advice or, or what they need to, to do moving on in their career? Um, both, again, both good fighters. Jake Ball, again, he was, he was absolutely flying. Um, probably stepped up maybe too, too many levels um, and when he was when he was beat, but that's there's no harm in that because mm. as long as you learn from it and uh, kind of put those mistakes aside, you, you can come stronger. And I think that can be the making of a fighter. And he's obviously shown um, he's come back from that well. So good luck to him. And uh, if he just keeps working hard and uh, learning his his craft along the way, getting that experience, that's that's what counts. And a lot of people kind of neglect how important experience is. Mm. Um, it's kind of going through the hard times, going through these fights, going through the training camps, um, having the setbacks, having the, the knockbacks. So the experience is, is key and uh, I, I wouldn't rush. Um, Boazzi, he, um, he's a great fighter and again, as long as he gets his experience and stays on track, he'll do, uh, he'll do really well. Okay, great. Well, as always, it's a pleasure speaking to you, Frank. Um, looking forward to seeing you in action on Saturday night as you make your first defence of your British light heavyweight title. Brilliant. Frank Bellioni, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Hey, Fight Fans, it's Michelle Joy Phelps. And if you aren't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you go ahead and do so by clicking this icon right here. Oh, and if you're also in any need of any boxing gear, make sure you make your way over to ProBoxingSupplies.com.